Hey guys, thanks for tuning into SimTech channel. This is tutorial number eight on our series of short circuit MVA calculation. Now, by the end of this tutorial, if you stick around, you should be able to solve power system network involving Delta connections or Delta configurations. And also be comfortable with dealing with circuit involving reactors. Now, a reactor to simply put is basically an inductor. Except the fact that an inductor will generally have a low resistance between its terminal. So if you take your normal inductor that are mostly used in boost and back converters, you measure the resistance of the coil, it will have a fairly low resistance. Now, unlike that, a reactor will have a very high resistance. And that is primarily because it is used to reduce or limit the short circuit current. And that short circuit current limiting capability is basically what these reactors are doing in the circuit. So if we have a fault at this point here, so the fault current from this generator will fall straight down here. But these other two generators B and C, they also will be obligated to supply now the current to where the fault is. Okay, but they will be doing so via the reactors. So that will then impede on the current so it's going to reduce that short circuit current to uh, not so much a safe value but to a value that will limit uh, the damage okay now having said that let's get into the problem statement here now we have a ring connected reactor system okay that is shown below if all the reactors are identical determine the reactance value x in order to limit the short circuit three phase symmetrical fault MVA to 600 MVA for a fault at F. So what they are basically saying here is we need to find this X percentage. Okay. So these are per unit reactants of this reactor. We need to find them so that this fault here that will develop here must be limited to 600 MVA. Now, you will realize that if these reactors are not here, okay, if you replace them with simple cables, short, the short circuit here will be much larger depending on the capability of these generators, how much they can supply to the fault. But if you put some certain reactors with a certain per unit impedance, then you will be impeding, you will be reducing, uh, limiting the short circuit current that can be present at this point here so that is what we need to solve here now stick around and see what is the story here now before we move on please guys if you uh, find anything useful in this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated now in order to solve this problem you need to ensure that you understand the keyword and get a good understanding of your circuit here so they say it is a ring connected okay ring connected reactor system so if these generators are connected in ring basically you have something like this a ring right a ring goes like this this is a ring and you have reactors connected in a ring like this basically coil and in between them you have points and what are these points these points are bringing in generators right like that you have generator and you have another generator there so this will be generator a and this will be generator b and this will be generator c now another key word to remember here is three phase right it's a three phase system now if this is a three phase system right and you have them connected in ring automatically you have to think of the coupling system in three phase uh, power network you have a delta and you have a star so what is this one looking more like this is looking more like a delta connections right so you can redraw it now to make it a delta configurations that is more accustomed to you so there it is so you have your point here right so this will be a this will be B and this will be C. So now you can see that this problem that was so complicated and is starting to look more like simple. Okay, 
I have a delta system here. So what do I have to do? You have to convert this delta configuration into a star configuration so that you are able to calculate the direction of the current more appropriately or to put it simple, much easier to deal with the uh, uh, current calculation in a star system than, than in a delta system. Because if you are in a delta system, okay, you have a current that's coming here. Now you know that this current is splitting like that to go into this coal and into this coal and then the current from the generator is also going to split then all of a sudden you have a lot of current loop you have to deal with okay now that we know that we need to convert this ring system which is basically a delta system into a star system that will that way it will be much easier for us to calculate these per unit reactants that we've been asked for now but before we can do that we have first to also convert this generator uh, into the equivalent per unit value as we can see each one of them are rated at 60 mva and they all have a 20 percent old per unit value now using the general per unit uh, formula i came up with generator a being equal to 0, 0,2 j per unit and generator b same value and generator c also the same value as they all having the same mva rating and old per unit value now if you are not too familiar with how to calculate this please review my previous tutorial on per unit system where i extensively talk about these calculations now moving forward now that we have these per unit impedance for each one of these generators we can then go ahead and manipulate this circuit that is looking very scary into a circuit that is more readable and i came up with the circuit here now you can see that this one here is generator a so we have generator a right here this is generator a and down here is generator b and here we have generator c and we have our ring connected reactors around here okay now now what you see here is what we are actually looking for so we are aiming to get this circuit into a simpler circuit by transforming this ring connected reactor which is a delta system into a star system okay so let's say this is the point a okay and this is point b and this is point c right so which means if we convert this circuit from a delta into a star this reactor here this is reactor AC, and this one here is reactor CB or BC, and this one here is reactor AB. Now, before we proceed here, there is another keyword that we need to remember here, and that keyword is identical, okay? Identical. So, what does it mean? All these reactors, they have the same value. Now, because these reactors are identical, what it means in terms of electrical power system is it is a balanced system so the system is balanced okay it's not an unbalanced system so all the loads are equal now to convert a balanced delta system into a star system the formula is very simple so it's za the the, the one star branch is equal to zb the other star branch is equal to zc the third star branch and that is all equal to x a b so that is a reactor of this branch divided by three and it is also equal to the reactor of this branch divided by three and it is also equal to the reactor of this branch divided by three now this is only possible for a balanced system now you can verify this now to verify this formula here let's say you give these delta reactors a value of ohm right so which mean your star branch za okay so za will be equal to the one branch of the delta configuration so x a b so you're going to have x a b times x a c x a c divided by the sum of all the reactors in the delta so that will be x a b plus 
x ac plus x bc now if you replace the value of the reactors with the two ohms since they are all identical so what you will then have here will be equal to 2 times 2 over 2 plus 2 plus 2 and this will be equal to 4 over 6 and as you can see this will give you 2 over 3 right so 2 over 3 and look at it what we have here we have x a b divided by 3 so these two here represent x a b or x a c or x b c or whatever the permutation you want to use so it will yield the same so for z b you're going to have z b will be equal to x b c right times x b a like that divided by the sum of all the reactors just like we did here so you also going to have x a b plus x a c plus x b c and these will also yield exactly the same value so z c will be equal to x c a right times x c b also divided by the sum x a b plus x a c plus x b c now if all these uh, branches and pedants are identical you're going to get exactly the same answer as we got in here you can replace this a b with the 4 ohm here and replace the 4 ohm everywhere here you're going to get exactly the same result with a 3 at the denominator okay dividing whatever value you're gonna get on the numerator Basically, the 4 ohm will be on the numerator and you're going to get a 3 ohm. So if you put a 16 here, 16 ohm, you're also going to get the answer as 16 over 3. So it will be exactly the same in a balanced system to go to a delta system. But if the system was not balanced, so that means you have a 4 ohm here or a 2 ohm, a 16 ohm. And on this side, you've got like maybe a 5 ohm load. And on this side, you've got like... a uh, let's say a 10 right so which means the system is not balanced so in this case you cannot use this equation here you have to go with this equation here as they're going to yield each a different value so this is how you go from a delta into a star configuration okay now okay so now that we've done converting our balanced delta system into a balanced star system we can then go ahead and redraw our new circuit with a star configuration. Now, remember that these uh, delta connected reactors, they have the value of x. So that is what we are looking for. Okay, we are looking for this x value. So which means reactor AB is actually equal to x. Okay, reactor AC is also equal to x and reactor PC is equal to x. So, so which means this two here is actually equal to x so we're going to have z a is equal to z b is equal to z c is actually equal to x over 3 so that's what we got because they are all equal to x percentage now we can then go ahead and replace this value into our circuit so this is our new circuit now we've got our generator a okay with the per unit that we already calculated 0, 0,2 j per unit generator c also down here and generator b okay we still have our fault located at the same point that's the fault where we want to uh, limit to 600 mva right there now we've got now how a reactor we were connected in a ring connection delta into now a star mode so the current are going to be flowing this way right 
Okay, so now you can see that this is basically a parallel circuit. This is a parallel branch here that we need to find the current flow or the impedance leading to this fault here because that's the, the, the path the current is going to take. The current is going to take a path that will have some impedances. So in order to find that, we need to know the total impedance. Now let's redraw this circuit into a circuit that is also more simpler for us to read. So that will give us something like this. So we've got generator C, okay, on this side here, okay, that is 0, 0,2J per unit of generator C, and we have our fault here. Now at this point here, we then have X over 3, okay, so that is ZC, right? And then we have now this point here, that is a star point. So this here is now the star point. Okay, now from the start point, what do we have? We have generator A, that is supplying, right? And the regenerator B, also supplying. Now look what we've already done here. We've already combined, okay, the X over 3, this one here, plus the 0, 0,2. Okay, we've already combined it into a single impedance. And we've done the same also on generator B. We've combined this X over 3 plus 0,2J. So now you have this parallel branch of generator A and B, okay, joining here at this point here and going through this reactor X over 3, okay, so you now need to get this equivalent impedance, right? And this equivalent impedance here is now going to be in parallel with this equivalent impedance, basically 0,2J per unit of generator C right here. And that will give you the total impedance leading into this fault here. Okay, so this tutorial is getting too long, so I'm going to stop it here. Now, in the next tutorial, part two, we will continue and we will have to find the Z per unit total expression. So we need to find Z per unit total expression here. So this expression here is going to contain X as an unknown. Now, since we already know the magnitude of the MVA fault that we are limiting this fault at 600 MVA, okay, then we can use these parameters to find our Z per unit total and make X a subject of the formula so that we can then find X. Now, I'm already giving you the heads up, okay? Now, if you get there, you can use 33 kilovolt, okay, as the voltage on this bus bar so basically all these generators they are rated at 33 kilovolt so they are supplying 33 kilovolt okay to this bus bar so use that voltage and see if you're going to get the same uh x per unit reactance for all these identical reactors okay now until next time guys stay tuned for the upcoming part two of this tutorial again Please give the thumbs up for this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to SimTech channel. Until next time, cheers.